sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. Then. Cross the chest. Gift of God. Oh, shit. That's how we're starting. That's how we oh, start. Oh, boy. Gift Big of God. Big shoes to fill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's his name. That's the meaning of his name, Madis Yahu, and which language? Hebrew. I want you to walk me through it like I'm a kindergarten who doesn't understand terminology. Okay. Okay. In the Hebrew language, this name, Madis Yahu, is that your original name? Yeah, Matthew. It's like Matthew. It's like Matthew, yeah. right? And, and mm -hmm. do, um, does everyone go through this? This, name given? Or? You get a name when you're young. My, I got a name. I have. A, I actually got a different name. Uh -huh. It's a Yiddish name, uh -huh. but my parents lost the certificate. And when I became religious, I moved to Crown Heights. I said, everyone's got Jewish names. I can't come in here. Matt, my name is Matthew Paul. That's not going to cut it over here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yo, bring up MC Matthew Paul, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Matthew Paul. Uh, I okay. mean, just in that, in that crew, everyone was Shmooly, Shm you know, Shlomi, Shmooly, you mm -hmm. know, whatever. So... I need a Jewish name in those circles, so, so I don't I don't know what the original one was, but I'll go with the Hebrew name of Matthew, which is Madis Yahoo. Okay. So I started doing that, and then they found the certificates. So I had a whole situation like, well, what what's my name really now? Because you get you get called up to the Torah, uh -huh. you got to get called up by your real name and uh -huh. the, and the and your father's name. And I was like, well, what's the real name? And he's like, well, what's your other name? He's like, Fivish Herschel. That's, He's like, stick, stick with Modest Yahoo. That's, that's, modest that's Yahoo. good. That's going to work. Right. Yeah. So what, what like, um, growing up, you, uh, you were, or you are a Hasidic Jew? Or? I didn't grow up that way. I grew up just like a regular suburban Jewish kid. Really? So what's the difference well, as a regular Jewish kid? In a... Like, Judaism is kind of crazy because it's a religion, but it's also a people. It's like, it's kind of this mixed bag of things. It's mm -hmm. not just like a set of ideas or rules. It's also uh -huh. like, you know, a whole people. So... Jews, like, at a certain point, most the majority of Jews became not religious. They came to America, you know, assimilated into the culture. Uh -huh. And everyone kind of, like, people knew, depending on their parents or how much they passed down, you know, how, you know, some Jewish traditions or, or whatever. But then there's people that just, like, stayed, you know, steadfast to the religion. Uh -huh. And that's called Orthodox, you know, Orthodox Jews. Uh -huh. And within that, there's the Hasidic Jews, which are even further. And then within that, there's groups of Hasidim from all different places. Uh -huh. And so it goes, you know, further and further down. But When you first came out, you even wore the garb, right? Yeah, fully, fully. Yeah, and in, in, in that um, culture, you are you not allowed to be touched by... Yeah, it's, all, a, it's a lot of it is like separation. It's okay. weird. It's almost like Amish, but in the city. You know, like Amish people, they're outside of it all. Yeah. So a Hasidic Jew is like in the mix, in the middle of all of it, uh -huh. but yet trying to stay separate at the same time. So they have all these rules in place, you know. Uh -huh. You should look different everywhere you want to look like you have a suit on. You always uh -huh. look like you're, you know, working, you know, uh -huh. like you don't let your guard down. Uh -huh. And same thing with women, like you couldn't touch, I couldn't touch, you know. Yeah. Oh, you know, you oh, say uh, couldn't, like past tense. Yeah, and that all changed <laughs> in 2011, bro. Because <laughs> I, 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 I noticed um, in, in in the early parts of your career uh, when you, when you first when I first heard King uh, without a crown those days, um, it seemed like and this was the first and second album stages that you went through a, a evolution, you know. Um, as an artist, but also as a person, mm. right? Um, yeah. You kind of—it seemed like you—you you, uh, got a little bit away from where you were initially. Yeah. What happened? Well, basically, like when I first came out, I went—you know—I was in school, the new school, mm -hmm. and I knew I wanted to do music. Actually, I, you know, remember Loud Records? Steve, come on, Steve Ripken? So my cousin grew up with with, with the younger brother. Uh -huh. So I had my little—I had my little um, demo that I made. I rode my motorcycle to Minneapolis. I had a friend who had a little studio. Made a three-track tra demo. I walked it in there. And uh, they didn't get it. You know, it's like, this Jewish per is Jewish. He's rapping about slavery. Like, what's he even talking about? Uh -huh. um, and um, they're like, the beat is dope, but we don't we don't get it. And so I, I, I knew I wanted to do music. I just didn't know how it was going to happen. So I just I let go of it, really. I just said, I put it in God's hands. Uh -huh. I believed in God. I started getting spiritual. I started praying. I started, you know, keep taking that whole road. And before I knew it, I found myself fully couldn't walk down the street with that with my glasses on so I wouldn't uh -huh. see billboards and stuff. That's how religious I was. Always memorizing Torah wherever I walked, just uh -huh. saying Torah over again. I went deep, deep in. And then these cats called me up, um, that I went to school with and they went they went to music business school at NYU. And we got a like we got a grant to, to promote Jewish music. We want want you to be our first artist. So and then on boom, just happened because, you know, 
Jimmy Kimmel, all those things, uh -huh. Hasidic guy doing this music, and, uh -huh. and then it just took off. And then, then over over the years, it just it just cer certain things just didn't mix right with me. I just didn't it just didn't feel right a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Certain things that I was being told was the right the right way to be, the right way to think uh -huh. about everything, mm -hmm. everything. So I started trying to think for myself and find my own path within it. And I was trying to balance and walk the line. How do I how do I do both? You know. Uh -huh. And then eventually. I just was I was walking down the street one day, I had my beard ten years, I didn't shave, I was like, I could I could this is my face. Yeah. It just doesn't belong to anybody else. This I could shave. Uh -huh. It was like a revelation. It was like all of a sudden I was like, I can do whatever I wanna do. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. my life. Yeah. yeah. And it just that was like ten years, you know, over ten decade of being in it, you know, and just uh -huh. and then it just came out like Phew. Wow. Just out of revelation. So let yeah. me like um I know and forgive me if this sounds ignorant. Okay. It's okay, man. Okay, but what what is the difference between the notion of white nationalism, mm. okay, mm -hmm. and and Jewish culture, if you will, religion? What Jewish folks say they're the chosen one. Oh, well, that that was kind of my one of my biggest issues. Really, was uh, this this idea um, that the Jewish people are chosen? You know, mm -hmm. and I never I never really that never jive with me. That's not the way that I. I was raised, you know. Mm -hmm. So I tried to I, I always ask rabbis everywhere I went, like, let me, let me ask you about this one. And everyone always has some kind of slick way to kind of mask it up and make it sound kind of like, oh, well, you know, it's this, that. But at the end of the day, it's, it's straight up. I don't. I think it's bullshit, dude. It's straight well, up. You ain't gotta say that because I'm asking. No, no. <laughs> I'm game, man. I'm, I'm no I'll say the same. I will say the same thing in a, in a room full of Hasidic rabbis. Straight up, I will say the same thing. I don't. I don't agree it's with that. Just the I notion of being the chosen one. The idea that yeah, that there's like that that one person's soul, a, one human being's soul, is different than another's. Mm -hmm. Just like a Christian person that believes they're saved, or you know, versus you, you're a nice guy, but you're going to hell. You know what I mean? Okay. Like that notion that a person's soul is different because of where they come from or or their or their makeup or something you know hmm. yeah man i got a lot of questions man. <laughs> <laughs> i'm right. glad you're here man um i want to take them back you know to a song and then we're gonna play some new music too as well um the modest yahoo is here king without a crown uh this was a song that was really big i know at mtv we were uh you know really supporting that and it was just this guy <laughs> This acidic Jew with these locks coming, <laughs> coming out, and we didn't get it at first. And then you heard him rap, and it was like, yo, this dude is nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to talk with him? 888-742-3345. He has a new album. It's out today. It's called Un Undercurrent. And this is an uh, undercurrent project. It's something you wrote, produced, recorded. You did everything with you and your band, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, that, we didn't bring out an, an, an outside producer for this. It's like we've been making music together for 15 years. Uh -huh. um, I got the right group of people together. I was I was uh, saying actually recently, like the first time when I grew up, I grew up with Dan, right? He's mm -hmm. here in the, in the What's up, Dan? building. He was a rapper in my high school. And and I was like the hippie kid with sandals. I was like, I don't like rap music. Uh -huh. And then somehow I started beatboxing, and I just got it. We went to a show at Tramps, and Roots backed up Common. And uh -huh. Razel beatboxed with this dude, Kenny Muhammad, uh -huh. on stage. And, and I was like, I just all of a sudden, I got it. I got it. So for me, it was always about that live, that having a live band be playing hip-hop live, because I was a live artist. Uh -huh. So I got the right guys together, and we just went in the studio, and we just recorded just what we do, what uh -huh. we do live. So you you, you seen success on um, on every level, on a high level, and and, and on the independent level. Um, this dude's show is a remarkable. You got a really great show. I've seen your show, even though we haven't sat and talked. Um, I want to ask you a question. I want to go back to um, this Jewish faith and culture. Yeah, yeah, no, that's okay. cool. <laughs> no, I, I can talk all day yeah, yeah, okay. about it. Okay. It's a good opportunity. I don't mind. So when I grew up, I grew up part of my family um, studied different religions and faith, um, Islam, Yoruba, Christianity, uh, Catholicism, uh, Rastafarian. Um, I'm not sure if any Jewish folk, folks are in my family. Probably uh, the Lost Tribe of Shabazz. I'm sure somebody's in there. Um, <laughs> the locks represented a whole lot in Rastafarian faith. You know, they were our, there are antennas. You know, um, you could pick up energy from them. You know, um, your faith and self, your dedication to the faith. What did the locks represent? What does the locks represent? So in Judaism, it's like they say that uh, it's, you ever heard of the Kabbalah? It's like the mm -hmm. mystical stuff. So mm -hmm. they say the hair represents what's called Gavura, 
which is like the left side, and the facial hair represents the right side, which is chesed. Gavur is like strength or, uh, you know, uh -huh. kind of, you know, constraint. And and, uh, and chesed is like kindness or giving, uh -huh. you know. So they say like the beard represents the kindness, you know, like the, the mercy of God. They say in the Kabbalah, it's like comes through somehow, some aspect like that. So how did the Rasta community embrace you when you first came out? I just remember one time when I was in Amps, I was in um, Amherst, Massachusetts. There was uh -huh. like a reggae show going on early, early, fully Hasidic. And I went in, and the, there was a reggae band playing, and I got up and I, I spit. Fully Hasidic, right? Uh -huh. And it was mostly Rastas, not like, you know, not white Rastas. Uh -huh. And um, and, there, and this one chick came over to me. She's like, what do you know about Ailey Selassie, blah, blah, blah. And the older Rast, like the elder dude, came over. He was like, he knows from King David, uh -huh. you know? Like, uh -huh. it's all overlapped, it's you know what I mean? Yeah. It's all, it all comes, it all, it's all twisted together, uh -huh. you know? Do you mind speaking about um, relations with the opposite sex? Because I'm mm -hmm. not sure, again, how there's so many different sectors of Judaism, like yeah. you said before. So I'm thinking a lot of times when it comes to stories of there has to be a lot of separation between the genders. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's more so for Orthodox Jews yeah. or can you break it down? Well, Seth Rogen's Jewish. I mean, everyone's <laughs> Jewish. I mean, like, I mean, <laughs> everyone's Jewish. It's just, yeah. it's an, we're talking about Orthodox Jews, religious, yeah, religious yeah, yeah. Jews. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a separation. There's like, you know, it's like a lot of old fashioned kind of rules. Right. You know? But I mean, like, between the genders. Because I've heard things like when it comes to. Like the sheet uh, and all that? You're talking yeah, about the sheet. Exactly. Where does nah, that that's, come that's a, I think that's a, what we call a Baba Misa. That's like a, a tail, a tall tail. Ah. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I've seen, I've seen those dudes. I seen condoms pop out of those dudes' pockets, like in Williamsburg. You know what I mean? The uh -huh. most religious guys, and they're not they're, they're not using them with their wives, you know. Yeah. Um, so there's all kinds of different rules and ways to bend the rules and stuff. But okay. the gist of it is, you know, like when I got into, it, it was like just discipline, just like trying to stay focused, yeah. and not get caught up in all those things that we love that kind of pull, you know, might pull me in different directions. That's mm -hmm. that's why I stayed stayed with it. And then where it started to hurt was like when I would be at a festival and be like a group of kids, like you know, 13 year old dudes and they all huddle up, but modest, let's get a picture. Mm -hmm. And then be like seven, you know, young, young girls come over, like nothing sexual, nothing crazy at all. And I'd just mm -hmm. be like, I'm sorry, I can't. Uh, and yeah. it was like, I only got five seconds with these people. You know, it's either embrace or boundaries. Mm -hmm. And why do I have to set boundaries when there's no reason to set boundaries? There's times you got to set boundaries with people. I yeah. did it last yeah. night. This girl was like, can I get a picture? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm not feeling great. She's like, can't you pretend? I'm like, I don't pretend. Oh, can't so, you pretend? Like, can't you pretend? Wow. Yeah. So there, sometimes you got to say, and I had to learn how to do that because that's not really my the type of guy I am, but I had to learn real quick, mm -hmm. especially in the community I lived in because everyone had an opinion. They mm. had no problem saying their opinion to me like over and over again. So, so. you date black women? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm not dating anyone right now. Okay. But yeah, I have. But was that an issue before? Martha Stewart, fifth grade. <laughs> Martha Stewart. There is a black Martha Stewart. <laughs> Martha Stewart, the same. That was her name, yeah. yeah. Then Snoop got to her. Now she was. <laughs> <laughs> I, was going, I was thinking about all the rappers, like you know, um, the Beastie Boys, who uh, kind of through the Beastie Boys is how I start learning about Judaism a little bit. Um, and you look at the success of a Lil Dicky, a Mac Miller, mm. right? You know what I mean? Uh, the biggest rapper, or uh, at least arguably one of the biggest rappers out today, Drake. Mm -hmm. You know who doesn't hide. Mm -hmm. His heritage, you yeah. know. Um, do the Orthodox are they okay with hip hop embracing? It's I, I mean, it depends on who. Like for example, right now I got these three kids that are living in my house from Crown Heights. Mm -hmm. They're all the kids of rabbis, Chabad mm -hmm. rabbis. Okay, and they they were only allowed to listen to my music, live at Stubbs too. They got sent to a yeshiva for like bad kids, and they had to. That's all they did. They had drums in the basement. And they studied my music, and they came out playing reggae and hip-hop music that's what they wow. do and these are like religious kids from you know what i mean so you never know you know modest yahoo is here he got his sixth studio album undercurrent um i'm gonna to open up the phone lines i didn't even mention mike Pos Pos posner um alchemist hoodie allen simon rex action bronson lil dicky you know all of these guys have done really well for themselves um you want to talk with them though 888-742-3345 this is the new single step into the lights the new album is called Undercurrent. It's out today. That's stepping to the lights. Yeah, while we got them here, I'm just going to ask a bunch more questions here. <laughs> at, at, you know, a lot of politicians overseas in the Middle East are trying to settle age-old issues, especially when it comes to Israel and Palestine. 
from your perspective, is it is peace possible or is this just a political game or we don't know? Yeah. And the area is so small. Yeah. You know, is it possible? And I don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> You know, but, Man, but, but, if it was so, possible, I feel like it would be done by now, you know, because a lot of people really do want peace. What do the young people think in Israel? What do They're, the young people in Palestine think? Uh, there's a combination. The culture is just, it's like everywhere else is a combination of things. People are, a lot of people are just like, what now? You know, what are we, yeah. they've been trying. Like everyone's got family, people that have been affected. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Last time I was there, there was people being stabbed in the street. You know what I mean? My mentor had his, he's, he's got all his fingers missing. You know, someone jumped up with a machine gun and just emptied out on him, you know? Wow. And um, so these guys are real. Like my, my teacher, he lives in Hebron. He lives surrounded by Arabs in a, in a, in a shack with no, mm -hmm. with no, uh, with bullet holes through the walls with his kids. You know what I mean? I mean, a lot of these guys are real, real people. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And um, it's not easy, man. It's, it's so convoluted. I think it's all just, it's about having the conversation and just, trying to talk through, you know, just, you know, that's not, that's not a mystery. It's like getting in the same room, having a conversation, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. everyone points the fingers. Now with the internet, it just gets worse and worse and worse, and people don't even talk, you know? People don't even Does sit America in the room Does America help together. it or hurt it? Like, our, our interference, has it helped or hurt? I think if it wasn't for America, Israel would have done a lot of things, probably. Okay. Like, you know, yeah, we, six million, you know what I mean? We got Israel, like, they don't, we're not interested in being tossed into the sea. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we've been bombed. Like, and there's no other country in the world that would put up with, that would get bombed like Israel's been bombed and just be like, do, you know, they would take out, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, I don't I don't know that for a fact. That's my opinion. You that's know? your opinion. No, I, think Ameri I think America ho ho has held Israel back and maybe that's a good thing. You know, that's. I've talked to Palestinians that said it's like bringing a, a slingshots to a gunfight. Mm -hmm. And the Palestinians are holding the slingshots, mm -hmm. you know, and Israel has the big guns. That's right. Hmm. Straight up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. well, I guess they were accurate with that. <laughs> they were absolutely. Okay. Israel's got nuclear weapons. Yeah. Got best Air Force in the world, best intelligence. Uh -huh. Israel does not fuck around. Uh-huh. You know, they're... Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, so but they're wanna... people that want peace. Like, yeah. they're they're the sweetest people in the world. You know, mm -hmm. they're nice people. Shit, not in the way general. you explained it. <laughs> we don't no, fuck around. Anyway. I'm just saying, like, you know what I mean? We've been, we, you know, the, when the line is crossed, but there are yeah. people that want, the, but the whole situation is just messed up. It just, it's, it's twisted. It's convoluted. It's convoluted. It's convoluted. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Heather. No, because I didn't realize, like, there was, I was raised Catholic, and I went through the entire process of Catholicism, We and I didn't realize there was some similar procedures. We go through a process called confirmation where we take on a name. And, you know, growing up, sometimes just from a girl like me from the hood, you'll see a guy maybe like Shine who don't understand. And you look at him and you just like, yo, he bugging. Like, what, what is he what doing? Happened, what happened? Right, like, right. where his mother at? Like, what <laughs> happened to him? Does that happen in your community? Like, does a Jewish man become Baptist like or like a seven day Adventist? Do you ever see that happening? <laughs> I mean... I don't see that happening that much, but people mm. do all kinds of things. They'll be like, what happened? He's eating bacon. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, the moms are crazy. Yeah, they're like, they're yeah. upset. Yeah, right, right. You know, they're not happy about that. Got it. Okay. All right. We got Octo from Fresno on the line. <laughs> Say hello to like Ma Mata Shahu. Go ahead, Octo, real quick. Go ahead. Hey, uh, what's up, Sway? Uh, I want to give a um, shout out to you and uh, and Heather B and all the ladies. Um, Thank you. And I want to I wanna say uh, rest in peace, Chris Cornell. Yeah, uh, you know he he just died recently, but uh, I wanted to talk to Mo uh, Modest Yahoo about uh, how powerful uh, his music was and how much uh, it helped me get through uh, some tough times. Especially one one video uh, on on YouTube, it's a live performance of uh, One Day, and then um, it was uh, the other half was uh, No Woman No Cry. I mean that that was a uh, man. I got chills when I when I heard that. Also, I had a question um, about uh, one of the songs you did. And, uh, hey, man, the, you got to hurry up, Octo. You all got <laughs> the lines, man. Up, yo, man just ask a question, bro. Go ahead. Um, that When you said uh, from the forest itself comes the handle for the axe, uh, what did you mean by that? Uh, so, like, um, basically, you know, the idea that you have to come from something in order sometimes to be able to change it. You have to be able to come. You know from, what? You know what place. I thought too was like the like we provide for the act. You know, like it's kind of like how do you say destruction from 
the, the, the tree created the axe and then we go and cut it. You know what I mean? Like, it could be b- multiple meanings. It could be right? a lot of different things, bro. You're okay. right. You're right. Buy the new album, though, Undercurrent, in store <laughs> today. Peace. All right, Diana from Charlotte. Sell, sell, sell. Diana, what you like Good to morning. say? Hey, Diana. Good morning. Well, I wanted to say that I was lucky to get off of work early today, and I was thinking, I didn't even know this was live, and I said, Floyd is extremely blessed. I was a black girl. I grew up on Eastern Park, Queen Kingston, and believe me, I knew all the Jews and, you know, the looks you would get from them. And when I first saw Matis Yahoo, it was King Without a Crown, and I had to sit down and look at it, and it brought tears to my eyes because I was in a whole other city and state, and I was like, I can't believe that that was actually possible. And now I have my own baby, and believe me, I have every album up until now. I'm happy to make a new one. But it opened up a whole new sort of spirituality. I mean, I've I've experienced Muslim, Buddhism, Hindu, Christian, Catholic, Mm -hmm. everything. But this is just spirituality. And I tell you, I saw you live in Massachusetts, and this dude had on the freshest white hat ever. (laughs) He was with Doug Trio. And, you know, it was just amazing even to see a lot of different Caucasian or white people, whatever their backgrounds were, to come out their box. And, you know, certain things you just don't know, especially when you're black. Our people just don't know that there is, you know, there's life for them with other cultures. Mm-hmm. You know, we're really sheltered from that. You know, we only know um, what they want us to know. All right, Diana, thank you for your comment. And then be sure to pick up the album Undercurrent today. Um what I want to do. DB, you got a quick question? Yeah, m- mine's not so serious. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to know about the handle of no, the axe no, in the no, wood. You, or you answered everything about that. Um, I'm a big horror fan, and you work with Sam Raimi yes. on uh, The Possession. Mm. I just wonder, did you get any like backlash or anything? Or, or, or was it cool just working with Sam or anything? I mean, it was cool. That, dude, that whole experience was crazy. We did a horror movie. I played a Hasidic exorcist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it was wow. crazy. Oh, he was really pushing the envelope, huh? Uh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> no, but the director wanted, they wanted me, and I was like, Oh yeah, I'll do it. And then I had to do it. It was a crazy, crazy thing. And I, in the end, I get killed. I'm upside down in a car, and they had tubes coming in. And we, they say go. They hit a button, and blood comes flying out. You know, in my eyes and my nose. It was union break. I had to, st- I like, to like stay there. Like what? this can't be. And they're messing with me. <laughs> wow. Did you get backlash from that? Um, not no, not really. It was like it was like it was cool. People like it. Most people, most most, I think Orthodox or Hasidic people, not really watching horror movies too much. Okay, good point. Good point. You need to get away with it. All right, let's do this, man. Before you go, because Derek Luke is here, and um, he's gonna come in here to actor Derek Luke and uh, talk to us about a uh, educational program he's working on. But you want to bring this dude over here? Yeah, yeah. This is my this is my dude, Stan Ipkiss. He started rapping. He put me on the hip hop music when I was a kid. I started beatboxing with him. He's on the new record. We got a new tune yeah. together. Up, He's man? on the What's original up, record. Respect, man. This is it, bro. Respect, Heather. This is that moment, man. Respect when I got the DJ word I was Wonder. coming, I had to hit him and yeah, say, "You yeah, gotta yeah, come yeah, with me." Yeah. I knew it mean a lot to him. So. This is it, man. That's what you dreamt of. These boys from Northern California. These Bay Area boys, right? We are originally, originally, originally yeah. Berkeley, Born in Oakland. Shout to Totland. Okay, Berkeley. Damn, Totland. We know about that. Ferry on Lake Marion. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> if you know what that is, you'll be laughing too, yeah. right? <laughs> All right, you ready? Uh, say your name without your social media, man. Uh, Stan Ipkiss, ask Stan Ipkiss. Okay. IPCUS. I'm on the new song, Blue Sky Playground. I'm honored to be here. Okay. And thank you, Mathis, for putting me on the album. My old friend, my dear old friend. Yeah, man. And then you want to give out your social too? Yeah, Modest Yahoo. There it is, bong. You know, <laughs> but hey, man, this dude beats was so fire. We asked him to stay. Black Sun. He um he's also with you know D Block the uh, stuff with the Locks Jada Chris Rivers. You know, you ready? Ready, sweat. Okay, hey Modest Yahoo. I don't care how you worship. It don't matter to me. It don't matter to me where you been in the world. Hmm. Doesn't matter to me. All that matters right now is you got bars. Bars. <laughs> you got bars. Yes. yes. Drop that beat on them. Black song. Black song. Black song. Okay. Let me say that. You go first. Yeah. Yeah. Hidden gems, Yankee half flat brims, shroom stems, red rocks, stone hens. Adjust your lens, can't trust it. Bust it, good luck, kid. Fist in your mouth, like a muppet, no strings attached. Puppets play the role, but I stroll relaxed, in control or facts. Screw a fair bold dip, ain't new to this. I diss a bitch ass with crass remarks and get hits to show I'm married to these chips. Doggy is hilarious. Foggy out in Frisco, I'm a bay boy with dub roots. Speak truth and get gruesome on loops. Tie up your boots and pull your sleeves up. We puttin' in work. Merc your favorite, then smile.
smirk Give you pricks like smurfs, I go berserk, jerk ah. The quirky kiddo, lanky height, cry brillo, I'm nice Stop you sleeping, get your dome up off the pillow Think twice before you test the professor in charge Laying in the cut with my dog, my sis, Yahoo, what ah. Ah, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah Mmm, I say you have one run runny but you could not try it And them crazy mothers them never have one for me say Them try not to give me down because them see no joy All them know is them fans are you call up a man that boy not try Them see now open up your eyes Every politician I'm a human in this kind I'm saying I'm a peaceful race is wrong and it won't come my way Hey, 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 hey. And I kiss my wife If we have some more time Then I slip in the pipe But I gotta make ends meet There's bills to pay Plus my son gotta get to the bus For first grade Got another one in preschool He just turned five And my baby boy's too Crazy how time flies But it is what it is I'm about my biz When it comes to this paper I stay on my grizz Rolls the Cheerios Waffles Whatever they want I'm in the office by nine There's no time to front Text messages Emails It's off the hook Telling so many stories I could write a book ah. I'm in the boardroom meeting conference calls till dark fuck a pitch I just hit the shit out of the park swing back to my crib give the kids a bath tuck them in pour a nice glass and count my math shit Modest Yahoo <laughs> Flat. Stan Ipkiss yes yeah <laughs> undercurrent in store now baby right there. <laughs> yo he been saving that for a lifetime let's yo. go baby <laughs> oh, let's go man. baby oh <laughs> swing yeah. heaven be with <laughs> we got hyenas up in here. Hyenas! Hyenas <laughs> planes. Hyenas in the office. Damn, what's uh, happening, man? That was dope. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. That man. was dope, bro. Yeah, I'll step aside. Thank you, guys. Man. Uh, absolutely. That was an honor. No, nah, man, that was great, man. Thank you for not stinking up the airways. I appreciate <laughs> you. <laughs> Undercurrent is the name of the album, man. It'd be interesting if you and Drake it. Have you ever met? Who? Drake. Drake. Yeah. Not in person. Not in person. Would you no. work with him? Oh, he was yeah. Would that be something? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm just putting it in the universe. Let him know. Yeah. I'm just putting it in Plant the universe. Seed. I planted the seed. <laughs> All right. Thank you for coming by. Great conversation. We got to do this again. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. Absolutely. Continue success. All right, bro. All right. Thank you. Kiss your babies. I will. Okay? I will. Absolutely. Undercurrent, the name of the album. We got Derek Luke up next. 888-742-3345. Here's Heather B. All Glocks down. Yeah, Sway in the morning. Yeah. Shade 45. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.